In the next set of videos, we're going to look at doing a series of calculations involving the equilibrium constant. And a really important thing that you should do, in addition to looking at how we do the calculations and working through them, a really important thing you should start to, to look at is looking at features of the question that will help you identify what type of question it is. Because there are a large number of questions that we can ask you with related to the equilibrium constant. And really the key thing is to identify what it is that the question is actually asking you to do. So the first one we're going to look at, and I like to call this a type 1 problem. So you're going to hear me refer to these things. I'm going to try to break them down a little bit. And the reason why I call it type 1 is because what we're calculating in this case is an equilibrium constant. So we're going to separate the two main categories depending on what we're trying to calculate. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can actually calculate the equilibrium constant. Type 2 problems are going to ask us for some kind of concentration at equilibrium. So that's what we're going to separate them into type 1, which is focusing on the equilibrium constant, and type 2, which is focusing on some kind of concentration. So let's look at what the problem says. So it says hydrogen iodide decomposes at moderate temperatures according to the equation below. When 4 moles of HI is placed in a 5 liter vessel at some temperature, 458C, the equilibrium mixture was found to contain 0.442 moles of I2. Calculate the Kc for this reaction. Now, here's the big tell for type 1. The big tell is it's going to ask you to calculate the value of Kc. So when you get a type 1 problem, and the setup for a type 1 problem is going to be, you know, calculate the value of Kc, you know that you're going to be given all of the information you need in order to calculate the equilibrium values. So what I'm saying is, is like, what I'm saying is, is when we calculate K, so if we were to write K for this, and the step one for all of these things is always to write out the K equation. And this, this is going to be, whether, whether it's type 1 or type 2, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to explain to you why uh, it's a good thing to do. So in this case, we're going to have K is equal to the concentration of H2 times the concentration of I2 over the concentration of HI squared. And it's really important that you understand that these concentrations that are in here are the values of these things at equilibrium, right? Because that's what the equilibrium constant is. It tells you what the ratio of the concentrations are at equilibrium. So it's really, really important now as we start to do calculations that we understand what is going into these K expressions. And all of these values are going to be K are going to have sub E's when we're dealing with K. Because we are going to get some initial values and we're going to get some some values at equilibrium. And it's important we distinguish so we don't put the wrong thing into our K equation. So now if we're going to calculate K, we're going to get so we're going to be given information that's going to allow us uh, given info about the concentrations at equilibrium, and we're going to use this to calculate K. So in some way, we're going to get enough information in here to calculate all of the equilibrium concentrations, because we're going to need all of those equilibrium concentrations in order to calculate the value for K. So that's a type 1 problem. Basically, you get, in it, you get information about um, all of the reactants and that's going to allow us to work our way towards getting equilibrium values and then we plug those equilibrium values in to get K. So let's look at the problem setup. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the information and distill it out of the problem. So it says when four moles of HI is placed in a vessel at 450 degrees Celsius. So uh, this initial condition we're starting with four moles of HI placed in a five liter vessel. So our concentration of HI initial is going to equal our 4.00 moles divided by the 5.00 liters. Remember, concentration is equal to moles over liters. So let's just get our initial concentration of HI. That's going to be 0 0.800 molar. Now, a lot of you guys are probably asking, well, Dr. K, how did you know that that was at equilibrium? Well, it really comes down to just reading. So it says when 4 moles of HI is placed in a 5 liter vessel. So that means that when we start the reaction with this, the equilibrium, we get the equilibrium value of 0.442 moles of I2. So that's how I know it's an initial, because it says when we start with this, basically, we then end up with uh, 0.442 moles of I2. So uh, this is my initial value for HI, and then we get some more information, and it says that the equilibrium mixture was found to contain 0.442 moles of I2. So let's write that down. So we have I2 
we identify that this is an equilibrium value, so I'm going to write sub E. And it's really important at this stage, regardless of what type of problem it is, that you start to distinguish what you have and where it is in relative, in relative terms. Is it, is, is it initial or at equilibrium? So this is going to give us 0 0.442 moles of I2. And because, remember, this thing is all taking place in the same vessel, the same 5-liter vessel, that volume is not going to change we can calculate the concentration of I2 at equilibrium, and that's going to give us 0 0.0884 molar. And so now the issue is, how do we use this information to get to equilibrium values for everything, right? We need equilibrium values not just for the I2, but we need equilibrium values for the uh, H2 and the HI. And what we're going to do is we're going to use an ice table. And you're going to see that the ice table is going to be persistent through a lot of these different problems. So we're going to set up our ice table here where we have um, on the top we have HI, we have uh, I2, and we have H2. And again, it doesn't necessarily matter where you put things, but I recommend putting the uh, reactants on the left and the products on the right. And then we put I, C, and E. So our initial value for the HI is 0 0.800 molar. And if you look at the problem, we don't get any information regarding an initial value for I2 and H2. It says when the reaction is basically started, it, it only starts with 4 moles of HI. So that means that we have 0 molar I2 and 0 molar H2. Because in that initial condition, when we start, it doesn't say anything about having I2 or H2. So that means that it, it's not there. So now we're going to use our stoichiometry to create our changed line. And our change line is going to be, remember, we put minus 2x, and we always put a minus because the reactants go away. And we're going to add x, and we're going to add x, and I get the 1 from the fact that the stoichiometric coefficients here and here are 1. So we're going to get, for every 2 of these that go away, we're going to get 1 and 1 I2 and H2 that come in. And then so that at equilibrium, we're going to get 0 0.800 molar minus 2x, and then we're going to get x and x. So what does this mean for us? Well, we know the concentration of I2 at equilibrium. The concentration of I2 at equilibrium is 0 0.884 molar. So now we can start to work out what the other equilibrium concentrations are. So the concentration of I2 at equilibrium is equal to the concentration of H2 at equilibrium. And I know that because the, these have the same x value, so they're going to be the same value. And so that's going to be 0 0.0884 molar. So we've got those two. And we've got to get the concentration of HI at equilibrium. And this is going to be 0 0.800 molar minus 2 times 0 0.884 molar. And so this is going to give us uh, 0 0.6232 molar for the concentration of HI at equilibrium. So from our ice table, the, the power of the ice table is that from a, just a single number, um, at equilibrium, we can use stoichiometry to get all of the other values, uh, um, and that's why the ice table is so powerful um, for these types of, of things. So now let's start plugging things into our K expression, and remember what I said, type 1, we're given info about the concentrations at equilibrium, and now we're going to calculate a K. Do we have all of the equilibrium concentrations? We do. We have I2, H2, and HI. That allows us to now calculate K. So if we want to calculate K, we're going to take 0 0.0884 molar times 0 0.0884 molar. And we're going to divide that by 0 0.6232 molar squared. And so this is going to give us a value of K equal to 0 0.0232, I'm sorry, 0 0.0201 is our value of K. And this is a good time to talk about something. Um, you know, before we had talked about K and what it is, and one thing we never mentioned was units. And it turns out that, yes, K do, can, you can figure out the units for K. Um, and in some cases, it'll be molar. In some cases, it'll be molar squared. Um, and it just kind of depends on what's going on with the expression, um, with the equilibrium expression. Uh, in this case, it would be... Um, it would work out to be unitless because you'd have molar times molar divided by molar squared. It doesn't always work out to be unitless, but in this case it does. It turns out that regardless of what the units are, we don't report units for K. So even if this did have units and you worked it out, we don't report them. So K is just always given as a number without units. 
and that's perfectly okay. And you're going to see that in later examples. You're going to see that a K is going to be given and it's not going to have any units. Um, and that's perfectly normal. So when you, when you calculate a value for K, there is no requirement for you to put in units. You just calculate the value and you leave it unitless. And that is actually what is done in chemistry. That's how we, uh, that's how we write a K. Uh, in this one it says hydrogen sulfide is a colorless gas with a foul odor and it decomposes according to the reaction below. When a 0.1 mole uh, when 0.1 moles of H2S is put into a 10 liter vessel and heated, it gave an equilibrium mixture containing 0 0.0285 moles of H2. Calculate the value of Kc. So in this case, this is a very similar setup, but there's going to be some differences here that I want to point out. So step one is always to write out our K equation, and that is going to be that it's the concentration of H2 squared times the concentration of S2 divided by the concentration of H2S squared. And um, so in this case, we're going to set things up. So we're going to take a look and see what it gives us. So this one says when 0.1 moles of H2S is put into a 10 liter vessel. So this is going to be our initial con condition. So we have H2S initial. This is going to equal 0 0.100 moles divided by 10 liters. And so that is going to be 0 0.0100 molar. Um, for the H2S initial. And then it says it gave an equilibrium mixture containing 0 0.0285 moles of H2. So our concentration of H2 at equilibrium is going to be 0 0.0285 moles divided by 10 liters. And so from that, we're going to get 0 0.00285 molar. And now it says calculate the value of Kc. So from this, we're going to need to set up an ice table. And so our ice table in this case is going to be our H2S, our H2, and our S2. And we're going to have initial change and equilibrium. So like the last example, uh, we're starting with the H2S by itself. Um, it doesn't say anything about putting any other thing into the vessel before heating it. So it's just the 0 0.0100 molar. And now we're going to do our change. And this is actually the interesting part. So here we're going to get minus 2x and I get that from the stoichiometry. And we get plus 2x and x. And you'll notice now that the products are actually coming in at different ratios. So we're going to make sure we take that into consideration uh, at the end. So what we're going to get is we're going to get 0 0.0100 molar minus 2x, 2x, and x. And so now we got to be a little careful. So our concentration of H2 is 0 0.00285 molar. And so we have the concentration of H2 at equilibrium and that's going to equal 0 0.00285 molar. Um, and so now to get the concentration of S2, what we have to do is we have to take this 0 0.00285 molar and we have to divide it by two because if you look, the H2 is twice the amount of S2. So to get, uh, so we have to get half of that in order to get the amount of S2. So when we divide this by two, um, we get a value of, uh, let me just look at my calculations here. Uh, we get a value of 0 0.00145. And then we have to deal with the uh, concentration of H2S. And so you, you can kind of, it's your choice basically what you want to do. Since this is 2x, we can basically take 0 0.100 molar minus 2x, which is the 0 0.00285 molar, and calculate that. And that gives you um, 0 0.00715 molar. Or you can take the 0 0.00145, which is x, and then um, plug that in and, and multiply it by 2. So you take 0 0.001. 0 .0, 0 0.01 minus 2 times 0 0.00145. And both of those are going to give you the same answer. You're, either way, you're going to get uh, 0 0.00715 molar for the equilibrium concentration of H2S. And so in this case, for K, we're going to get the concentration. Um, we're going to put in the concentrations 0 0.00285 molar squared times 0 0.00145 molar divided by the concentration of H2S squared, 0 0.00715 molar squared. And what you get for a value of K in this case is 2.3 times 0 0.00715 
times 10 to the minus 4. And again, this one is actually going to have a unit. So molar squared times molar is molar cubed divided by molar squared gives you molar. But again, we don't put that unit in. We just leave that out.